Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are do as we are doing today. And the recording will be available later on our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show um, how uh, where you can access all of our recordings. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have at Encompass Live. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission, being the state agency for all um, libraries in Nebraska, um, means we are similar to your state library. We provide services and training and resources to all types of libraries. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us for um, programs and resources we offer through the commission. And we also have guest speakers that come on. And today we have a combo of that. <laughs> um, uh, today we're talking about the 2023, our new uh, one book, One Nebraska, The Mystery of Hunting's End. And with us today is um, Tessa Terry, um, who's the communications coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Good morning, Tessa. Good morning. And Christine Walsh, who is, um, the Nebraska Center for the Book President and uh, Director at, um, yes, assessment. Yeah, that's a that's what I'm looking at here. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we may have a another presenter. We're waiting to see. We'll wait and see if our third one gets connected and working on that. <laughs> um, so I'll just hand it over to you all, Christy and Tessa, to let uh, um, talk about our our new book for the year. I'm actually really excited about it. I have not read it before or anything, but it sounds really interesting. Yeah. It is fun, um, and it's yeah. an exciting process. Um, just a little bit about the Nebraska Center for the Book. Anyone is welcome to join that for a very small fee. We have all kinds of events and activities throughout the year. Um, the goal of the Center for the Book is to encourage that community of writers, um, writers, booksellers, librarians, book lovers, to be in conversation, to and lift up those literature, literary arts. Um, so please feel free to join and get onto the Nebraska Center for the Book website if you want more information or reach out to myself or Tessa and we can certainly get you connected with um, more information on any of that. Um, we have an active board and we meet four times a year to work on a variety of projects, one of which is One Book, One Nebraska. So we'll hear more about that today. But it is great to be a part of this project. And I believe we're in our 19th year. Is that right, Tessa? It is, yeah. I was just double checking that on the website. <laughs> but yeah, next year will be our 20th year. Wow. Oh, have to do something big for that. Yeah, yeah something special. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, I usually let Becky take over talking about the One Book, One Nebraska program in general. She is on the board for that program and on the selection committee, so she knows it very well, but I can give us a quick overview. Every year, the selection committee, um, we get nominations and we have a group of people who read all the nominations and rank them and try to decide what narrow down to like the top four or five books and from there we we, we pick a winner um, based on board members votes I believe and um, so this year we picked The Mystery of Hunting Zen by Mignon Eberhardt and it was originally published in 1930 and then reprinted by University of Nebraska Press which is the copy that we have in our book club kits and that 
I think is widely available on Amazon and things like that or in bookshops today. And it, even when they reprinted it, they've got a nice little uh, feel on it. This is One Book, One Nebraska, which is really fun. It's part of the cover art. So that's not a sticker. That was some. That's just actually yeah, printed. Yeah, that's on the, the book art when they did a reprint of it for just for us. So that's really kind of fun. Yes. And um, Becky leads the committee and has done so with great passion for years. So she keeps us coordinated. Um, obviously, working with Rod and Tessa, but keeps us on track because I think nominations close about the middle of June. Mm -hmm. And by September, we've got to narrow it down to three books. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, it's quite a process. I mean, oh, off the top of my head, I can't remember how many were nominated last year. <clears throat> but usually upwards of, what, 20 to 30 books are nominated. Yes. And uh -huh. so that's a lot of files for the committee to read and, and sort through. and try to figure out what would be the best option for the next year's book. And we'll talk more about the nomination process a little bit later as well. Oh, hang on, there's Becky, hold on a second. Yay. Awesome. Hello, Becky, you made it. <clears throat> Am I on? There you are, yes. All righty. <laughs> Great. It, do you have a camera that you want to share on there? Or do you want to? I do not. It took three different devices to get here. So okay, no problem. <laughs> no camera. We don't, we don't want to throw you into the deep end, but we were just chatting a little bit about the selection committee. And can you give people a little bit of an overview about your work on um, leading that selection committee for One Book One Nebraska? Yes. The Nominations, of course, come from the public. And as we um, begin to go through the nominations after June 15th, we are verifying that um, books are by a Nebraska author or that they have a Nebraska theme or setting. And then also verifying that they are in print and readily available to readers. So um, once we have been able to verify those aspects, then we have a list to operate from. And we work with a committee of usually five to seven readers uh, who go through and uh, start reading the book. We do about three rounds of reading with every round we're asking for response and being able to uh, narrow the pool down. This year, I believe we had 27 books that we were operating from. Of course, we're pulling out um, duplicates. A book only has to be nominated by one person to be under consideration. Um, but I believe we had 27 when we started the first round of reading, and then we work to uh, come down to a short list. And our short list for this year had four books. Um, and those were the Nebraska POW camps, a history of World War II prisoners in the heartland, Haven's Wake, the plain sense of things, and the mystery of hunting's end. This short list is announced, it's publicized, the public does see it, and then the full board votes on the finalists. And from there, um, we have our selection for the One Book, One Nebraska. We've got a siren happening outside the commission, so. And I have to bear with it a little bit. <laughs> it's just a tornado testing. There's not an actual anything happening. <laughs> tornado siren tests every Wednesday morning. <laughs> so um, we mentioned this a little bit before, but 
This is our 19th year of doing One Book, One Nebraska, the state program. And here we've got a list of all the books we have chosen over the past years. And yeah, with next year being our 20th year, it'll have to be a little something special. Um, do a few extra, extra things around that, won't we guys? Absolutely. A good list of books. And we have so many book clubs across the state that read the One Book, One Nebraska every year and make it a part of their just normal book club group. And they've just gotten a chance to read some books that maybe they wouldn't normally pick up because of this program, but that's one of my favorite things about it. So we're going to jump into the mystery of Hunger King's End and what it's about. Becky, do you want to talk about that a little bit, just about the book in general? Well, the book was published in 1930, so um, it's a book that has been around for a while, and Mignon Eberhardt does have um, some strong followers in the state of Nebraska. She was born in Lincoln. She attended Nebraska Wesleyan and was a very prolific writer, um, wrote almost 60 books during her career. But The Mystery of Hunting's End is one of the early ones, as I said, published in 1930. It's set in Valentine, Nebraska during a blizzard. And there is a, a group of guests who have come to a family lodge. And this is a visit that these people had made five years earlier. And at that time, their host was, uh, he mysteriously died uh, during that gathering. And so now five years later, this follow-up visit, um, we find that some of the guests are mysteriously dying. So the core of the book is discovering um, who the murderer is and what the motivation is um, for the two deaths that take place during this second visit. So it is a true whodunit in that aspect. Two of the major characters in the book, Sarah Keat, who's a nurse, and Lance O'Leary, who is a detective, appear in this book. They know each other. They have some kind of friendship that has been established through um, previous contact and it falls to the two of them to work together to find out exactly what's going on as the mystery of hunting's end. Yeah, it's it's a really fun, um, mystery novels are just so popular and I had to look it up what this particular type of mystery was called, um, but they call it a closed circle mystery where you know it's a group, you know, what group of people the murderer is from, like um, Knives Out or Clue, things like that, where you have a group of people and you know one of them is the murderer, but you don't know which one. So it's just a really fun idea. And the idea that, you know, this isn't a new mystery idea. This is from 1930, um, and we get to re experience it now. So our next slide is about um, the One Book One Nebraska <laughs> website and everything involved in that. So I was just going to pull up our website. It's got a lot of great information on it about the One Book program, but specifically about the mystery of hunting Zen. You can learn a little bit more about this book and specifically, but also about Mignon Eberhardt. And we also have a list of all of her books on here, which is really interesting to see just how prolific of a writer she was and how often she published books. I mean, it's just fascinating. Two books a year almost. Yeah, I was wow. gonna say multiple books a year. That's, wow. But um, we have some links for other great information you can find on here. And a get involved page where you can find a copy of your book of the book at 
one of the public libraries across the state. Um, so you can check it out. We have links so you can borrow a book club kit from the Nebraska Library Commission or from your regional library systems. They also have book club kits available for this. And one of my favorite things that we have this year is a list of personalized discussion questions for your book club kits that came from Rick Seifert. He is a Wesleyan University professor who wrote a biography about Mignon Eberhardt. So um, he's very knowledgeable and he just wrote these very specific questions for readers to be able to um, have some great discussion about this book. We also have a Facebook page you can peruse that we'll be posting things on, like we posted about this event today. Um, if there are any events going, across, going on across the state, we'll post some information about them as we find it. There's actually an event going on tonight or this afternoon, right after this, at Lincoln City Libraries has their Lunch at the Library event at Bennett Martin. Is Rick Seibert talking about the mystery of hunting Zen? So if you're, if this is just making you even more interested, and you're in Lincoln right now, you can pop over for that. So we have um, some things we offer for you other than just the book club kit. We've got bookmarks that um, we can send you for um, your library just to hand out to anybody who is interested and wants to read the book, just as a reminder that this program's going on. And then um, we have posters available, uh, book club kits. And I was going to let Christy talk a little bit about book club kits because since she works in the library and they have book clubs that check out our book club kits and the one book one Nebraska. Sounds good. Um, we do. Kearney Public Library has an extensive collection of book club kits, which can be borrowed um, through us or through the regional library systems. <clears throat> or we have about eight copies of each title in each of our bags. And those are all listed on our website. But we always have at least one bag and usually two of the one book, one Nebraska selection. So that local book clubs can certainly engage in reading that book, but we always do it with our library sponsored book club. And that is just a lot of fun. It engages people in the One Book, One Nebraska program. And we try to have accompanying speakers come in throughout the year to support that. So people learn more about, maybe it's the setting or the author or the, um, the history of the circumstances of the book. And it's been a real treat over the years to host um, Karen Shoemaker and Donna CG and um, have them come because it just brings the book alive. And then the readers, if they've already read the book can ask those burning questions. What is it you wanted to ask the author or why did the author set it in this particular place? And to be able to engage one-on-one -on -one is just a great experience. So I would encourage um, you to invite those authors to come and if there are Humanities Nebraska speakers that are also related to that, because Humanities Nebraska has been a great supporter of the One Book, One Nebraska program over the years, um, reach out and invite those people to come to your library and speak, because it just enriches the whole experience. Um, and then we find that once we've done it here as a book club for the library one, word gets out throughout the community and it's like oh maybe we should do that too because people start talking um more and more so i'm excited to um reach out to ricks and see if he will come out to carney and give a presentation or maybe he can do it virtually for us um it's also fun to build additional programs so we are talking about maybe doing some um more mystery featured programs and those locked rooms stories that this is one of or maybe just talking about those um, fabulous writers like uh, Mary Roberts Reinhardt and Agatha Christie and Mignon that all are of that era and certainly were um, the pillars of that genre that's 
the right way to put it, but certainly the leading um, ladies of those mysteries. So um, we just try to push it out just as much as we possibly can. And I don't think our book club bag has arrived yet. Actually, it's checked out to our book club. And then after the middle of March, when we've discussed, it, it'll be out there for the general public to um, use. So it is a lot of fun. And it's great to be able to borrow things from the Library Commission, too, because if we just have one book club bag and we find a, another group in town wants to use it, then we can reach out to the commission and borrow that second bag, especially the one book, one Nebraska selections. How many people do you have in your library sponsored book club? Um, 20 to 25 on a regular basis. So it's a good group and people are game to read. Uh, we do a wide variety of things. Not everybody loves everything, but there's always a respectful discussion. And like with any book club or any book you read, um, it introduces you to new ideas and new style of writing. And maybe you find something unexpected that you would never have come across before if you hadn't been participating in that um, program. Yeah. Becky. Can you talk a little bit about the purpose of One Book, One Nebraska for starting those kinds of conversations? Well, if I can, I'd like to, to say one thing first uh, before that. I Just to piggyback on what Christy was saying, I was thinking about um, activities with people. The board game Clue is very much centered around this kind of what you're calling a, a circular mystery. And even uh, showing the movie Clue or the movie Murder on the Orient Express, which is Agatha Christie, um, they're both connected with that. Uh, so I think libraries are going to have a tremendous amount of fun with this particular book. Uh, one Book, One Lincoln. Our first uh, selection was in 2005. And the purpose is to provide an opportunity to promote reading, to promote uh, personal learning and reflection, and um, to promote our connection to our Nebraska heritage with uh, Nebraska writers, publishers, um, and building these ideas out into libraries, schools, communities, so that we have a point of reference about which we are connected during that year. And it's a program that I believe is highly successful. Um, a couple of things just about Rick Seifert. He's um, a full-time professor at Wesleyan still, so he's not, he's available upon, um, like that's up to your book club to contact him figure out when he's available um, or if Zoom is probably a better option for him. I think he's expressed that, but, but yeah, he's certainly willing to set up a time to talk to your book club and, and just give them a more expansive overview of this genre and me on Eberhard. And I, I hadn't even thought that about this, but it is today, yeah, March 1st. Um, which is Women's History Month in March. And so here we are talking about a female author from Nebraska that um, has left quite a legacy. But many people don't know about it. It was the first time I'd heard of Mignon Everhart when we started looking at this book, which I think is a little bit sad. We have her work in a library. <laughs> Yeah, any number of her books, I think this is part of a trilogy, have been made into movies. Now, I don't know what the availability is because the movies also were made in the 30s, but I thought it might be fun to track some of those down. I was going to ask, because I, I thought this particular one was made into a movie, wasn't it? I think so. Um, but yeah, how where do we get those old ones? Who knows? Anybody know? <laughs> if anybody has any thoughts or... Um, is it available in, in in any way? One thing I did want to point out for book club groups who do read 
the mystery of hunting's end we have some evaluations that we use as our own um, for the grant process just to know how people enjoyed the book what their thoughts were so those are linked on our get involved page close to the bottom and uh we just want to know what you think about the one book one nebraska program about this book in particular and that helps us build on next year and gives us ideas for what to do better so we really appreciate that feedback if you could go um, fill out those we also have print ones that we can send your book clubs if you prefer not to do it online which i know lots of people do um wait wait, wait here um aha um we do have some uh comments about the movie that we mentioned thank you so much yeah uh, uh, props to our had a reference here at the library commission lisa said yes the movie is available i'll send the link in just a minute and yeah. someone else married to say the film version is actually I, I thought i remembered this too that it wasn't actually called this you can't you wouldn't look up like the mystery of hunting zen the mystery film version is called mystery house um, interesting yeah let's see here it's not as good of a name <laughs> Well, adaptations. Yeah, there's a lot of hers that I'm, I'm doing the old Wikipedia thing. A lot of hers were made into um, films in the 30s and 40s, it looks like. Somebody should make do remakes or something. But, yeah. yeah. Time well, for movie. surprises me that these were so popular, popular enough to have movies made out of them at a time when, you know, People weren't making movies as great, you know, like today it feels like a movie comes out every month or, you know, you have like 10 movies that come out a month, but it would have been something special to have a movie made of your book back in the 30s and 40s, yet we don't, like I've never heard of any of these movies before. Let's see here. Always something new to learn, that's for certain. Yeah. And think of how many of Agatha Christie's movies have been made and remade and remade. Um, yeah. They just keep coming back. So maybe they'll be a resurgent with many ones as well. I hope so. That would um, be just kind of fun to add to the programming package too. Well, while well, we look at for more information on the movies, um, one of the events that's always connected with the One Book One Nebraska program is our celebration of Nebraska books that happens every fall. And we we don't have the date pinned down just yet, but it's usually in late October, early November, and it's free and open to the public. And we always have a presentation about that year's One Book One Nebraska, usually by either the author or some sort of scholar that can talk about the book and it's just so it's just so rewarding to have these presentations over a book you've read it it does it just brings it to life and it makes you so much more interested in the backstory and the history and the characters and the author themselves so i really encourage you um, we'll have more information out about the celebration date but if you're in lincoln and you're available you should come we also have our presentation of the Nebraska Book Awards that day, which is just another opportunity to see authors in person and have them talk to you about their book. And these are these are award winners that have um, written some great books and been recognized for that. And we also, at the end of that um, event, we announced the next year's One Book One Nebraska. So that's always an exciting time. Becky, do you want to talk any more about the celebration? Well, Christy? Um, well, we also give out the Mildred Bennett and the Jane Geske Awards, and those are things that anyone is welcome to send in nominations for. They do two different categories. One is organizations that support literacy and reading across the state, and the other is for an individual who's made 
outstanding contributions to the literary landscape of Nebraska. So if you want more information, those are up on the Center for the Book website as well. And it is a rolling basis for nominations. I think we close those in mid-August so that we can make a decision and get those awards ready to go for the celebration. Um, but I would really encourage you, if you know somebody that is a library champion, a uh, literary champion of some kind, please nominate them. It would be great to celebrate um, as well. And Becky gets to sit on the winner. She and Rod, I think, for about a month before it's announced. <laughs> so even the committee does not know who came out on top until that celebration. And that makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we cannot make an announcement about a winner without nominations and uh, we're we're just talking this morning about learning so much about Mignon Everhart who was writing almost a hundred years ago and what she was writing was is still very valid today so I would encourage people to you know think about Nebraska writers in a full context of not only contemporary writers, but also writers who are part of the heritage and um, submit a nomination. <clears throat> Excuse me, as I said, it only takes one person to nominate a book for us to consider it. It doesn't have to have five or 10 or 20 people nominate the same book. It only takes one person nominating for us to begin to that level of consideration. Oh, uh, while you're talking about the recommending books, we do have a question about um, the selection process or the, I guess the nomination process um, here. Um, and let's see, the comment says, this year's selection is only available in print and large print, not audio or ebook. Uh, would there be a time that you would include multiple formats as selection criteria? like require that it be available in multiple as those in those other formats. Um, it has come up multiple times as we try to serve book groups. Um, many people do want the audio or ebook, but this particular title does not have that option. Well, to talk about this specific book, we we have been working with the University of Nebraska Press and asking them for an ebook version that that's much easier to produce than an audiobook version quickly. So hopefully um, we will eventually have an ebook version available on Overdrive Libraries um, for our readers, but we don't have one yet. Well, it's just a suggestion that maybe to have that be one of the, I don't know if other programs like this have requirements about it should be available in all the different formats that potential readers might need. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's an excellent point and um, something that we, we work toward. Um, mm -hmm. Other states have other criteria. We've found that we don't necessarily have parallel lines with the process, but um, I think we're kind of in a gap in terms of the dates in which uh, books are printed and the contemporary approach to availability of literature. But it is something that we work toward because we want to include as many readers as possible. Yeah, not having the audiobook, I think it definitely the comment does say just limit your readership for, to some, for some Nebraskans, people that you know, here since you know we have the talking book and braille service here where we promote that a lot out of the library commission so it's kind of always on the top of our minds that there's so many people that can't um do not have the visual or the physical ability to do a regular book and the audiobook is their option speaking of the talking book section though um if you have readers that are part of our talking book uh program we do have this book available in our talking book as an audiobook. Um, oh, okay. So for our TVBS readers, they do have access to this as a talking book. Oh, um, good. Just for talking book and Braille 
uh, program users. So if you have somebody in your library, and this it's not just a visual impairment, it could be a physical impairment, it could be, um, Chris, I, am I wrong about this? I thought they opened it up to um, some sort of learning disabilities as well, like um, dyslexia. Yes, dyslexia, yeah, yep, yep. It's, oh. it's not just um, a visual, yeah, it can be physical, like I cannot hold the book because of some injury or, um, physical disability, but also, yep, to people with those kind of disability, um, reading type, um, comprehension okay. disability, I guess we talk about it, yep, so yes, all right, I, I, I didn't remember about that part, yeah, so we do have it if you're in that, the GBBS, and that's a thing too, to, uh, we should use this as a little, uh, promo for them, um, it can be for a temporary reason too, like if you just had an injury and at the moment, you know, your arms are in a cast or something, I don't know, <laughs> um, you can apply for it and, and become part of it um, and get TBBS access to all of the books that they have. Yeah. Um, so but just for people that like to listen to audiobooks, that's not that's what it's for, um, but yeah. So. But so if you um, are a librarian out there who has a patron or customer who you think would be perfect for that service, let us know and we'll get them um, hooked up. It's also for students, so it's for children as well as adults just to out there. So we do have access to that. As part of the nomination process, um, I've got, we've got a slide up here just talking about it a little bit. Um, it's up on the Center for the Book website year round. You can nominate a book. Um, our, our cutoff for each year, I believe, is June 15th. So after June 15th, you're nominating books for the next year, essentially. But it's really easy to use. We just want the title of the book, the author's name, your email, and any comments you might have. And then we just want to know these three simple things. So maybe in the future, we'll have some information about um, ebook and audiobook versions. Um, or maybe that's something just the committee will take into account when they're looking at books. But it's a super simple process, and we can't consider a book if you don't nominate it. So we really encourage you to get out there, and if you have a book you think would be just perfect for One Book, One Nebraska, submit a nomination for us so we can, can have it on the list as a possibility. And there's so many books published each year that there's no way that the commission staff or the Center for the Book Board could be aware of all the possibilities that are out there. So please <clears throat> nominate things as you come across them. That would be wonderful. Or even if you've nominated a book in the past that hasn't been chosen, nominate it again. Maybe that next year is a year. That's Sometimes I think the voting is very close as to which one ends up being the final selection so yeah so there's no rules about you cannot nominate a book that's already been nominated you can keep nominating the same one until it gets picked <laughs> i think the only caveat we have is this is an adult program so we don't consider children's books sure. so while your child while a children or ya book might meet all these um stipulations, we, we do limit it to more of an adult level reading book. Yeah. And it's really helpful if the person who is nominating the book has read it, because I think sometimes um, it allows for more specific comments in that box comments about your nomination. If a person is nominating a book, but has not read it, um, they may not know exactly what they're nominating. And if the nominator has read the book, then that person can put more specific comments in that box about the nomination. And we would hope that it would be a book that you enthusiastically support, not just because it has a passing reference to Nebraska. If you loved it, let us know, because that's what we want to share. Mm -hmm. And as you've said, there are books that may be nominated several times and not reach 
the final selection, but don't give up. Keep, keep nominating because um, it may happen. Um, ah, okay, good question. And something that I was just um, looking up doing myself. Um, has there been, and I know the answer to this one, has there been a consideration for doing a version of this for children's um, young adult titles? Um, there actually is a one book for Nebraska kids and one books for Nebraska teens program, um, not through the Nebraska Center for the Book, but through the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, we actually do have that. Um, I don't know if Tessa, if you can bring that up on your screen there um, yeah. from the commission's home page. Oh, duh. there it is. I'm sorry. I'm looking at my uh, go to webinar, not looking at your screen. Yeah. Um, so there is a 2023 you don't one. Have three up yet. Yes, there is, though. If you go to um, the page on our website, we've got the 2023 titles up. Um, I'm not sure what links you have there that would. Um, I thought we had that link on here. But yes, this is a program um, that we have for kids as well. It's not specific to Nebraska books or Nebraska authors the way the adult one is. Um, this is more um, picking out books for the different age readers so that they could have the same experience of reading the same book and talking about it across the state. Yeah, we just put the link to that website in the uh, questions too. Yeah, nlc.nebraska.gov slash youth slash OBOK. <laughs> one yeah. book, one kid. Um, but it is a book for kids and teens. And the 2023 titles are The Birch Bark House um, for Kids and Not If I Save You First for Teens. And the Amy is always great about putting, Amy Owens, Owens, one of our librarians, is great about putting up um, activities that go along with those books, whether it's like a word mm -hmm. search or a puzzle or something like that. So um, kids can be involved in multiple ways outside of just reading the book too. So there's some activities that can go along with that. Yeah. So we do have adults, kids, and teens um, one books. Anyone can go ahead and use in their libraries as a program, yeah. Um, if anybody has any more questions, we've got about 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. Becky, yeah. if you have anything you wanna add. Um, oh. If you haven't read the past winners of the One Book, One Nebraska, I would encourage you to go back and do that because all of them have had some really great programming with them, but there's something new to learn from each and every one of those. And maybe another piece of understanding of Nebraska's culture and history. Um, so I would encourage you to go back through that list if you've not read them. That's an interesting point, Christy, because in 2006, our second One Book, One Nebraska selection was Alex Cava's book, One False Move which yes. of course is a tale of murder. And mm -hmm. I was not on the selection committee that year. Um, and so I've not read that book, but one of the things I decided to do was to go back and read it to see the difference in the way um, the ideas of how to present murderous behavior, for lack of a better term, um, <laughs> evolves between 1930 with the influence of Agatha Christie and that circular tight movement and Alex Cava's book which I believe was published in 2004 in a much more uh, there's no mystery here you know right away who the murderer is and it's very dramatic it's very 21st century kind of approach um, so Doing what you said, Christy, it's been very enlightening for me to see the difference between uh, those two books. 
And if you go, just another shout out to Humanities Nebraska, if you go to their website, um, you can sign up for their weekly newsletter. And any number of these authors, Jonas is out there, Karen Shoemaker, some of those people, um, the, the Cather scholars are across the state giving presentations. And maybe it's not directly connected to one book, one Nebraska, but you always learn something. So take advantage of those opportunities as well um, to, to see people that have been at the libraries in the past. Um, and you know, some of them come back on a regular basis with yet another um, presentation that is related to the one of the books that was selected as a one book, one Nebraska um, title. Anyway, lots of opportunities to engage. Uh, we do a comment from one like one person says i think i will create a display with as many as i can um of these the one book one nebraska books we are celebrating 100 years of our library so i'm looking for some fun displays that's a great, great. idea i love that well and the cover oh, on mystery yeah. of hunting Zen is so beautiful that mm -hmm. that's really going to enhance the display love the artwork on that one yeah Yes. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any other questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions? Go ahead and type them into the question section. Um, we did, um, we were talking earlier about, and I think I had myself muted when I was trying to get into it more, about the movie version of this mystery house. Um, and I am going to find the right link here. I'm gonna pull presenter control back to my screen because I got the link here and um, I just wanna show. Yes, okay, um, I don't know if it's over here. Uh, the link that was shared that our um, that Lisa found here, the commission is from uh, here, the internet archive. It's the actual movie. You can just watch it right there on the, um, from their website. Um, and that's the link that's in the chat. Uh, it's only like it says 56 minutes so you can watch the movie there um through the searching i did i found that also it is actually part of a set of uh, that warner brothers put out of i think it's six six different horror mystery movies done as double features um that's available on amazon and possibly through other sellers um other places too um and you could have a movie night uh, double feature. These are, if, if they're short, like the Mystery House one, um, it's part of this collection that you can get on DVD. Great idea. I love that. So lots of options for that. And we talked about talking about a Braille service. Um, there's information right on there on our website on how to um, see if you're eligible, how to sign up, how to get become part of that. And the one book for Nebraska kids and teens here, I brought up the commissions page um, you can see, yeah, that we do have the current information and all those activities um, that uh, Tessa mentioned and book club kits for these as well, that we always put together book club kits for the one book um, uh, selections for kids and teens as well, just like we do for the um, adult one. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't know if we mentioned, um, talk about the movies and double features made me think of it. Mystery of Hunting's End is part of a series. So if you enjoy this book and you want to keep reading about the characters, she has other books. This is, I think, the second or third book in her series. It's um, the third. Yeah, I just had a list up here a second ago. Yeah, it's the Sarah Keat series, K-E-A-T-E. -E. Um, yeah, it says there's seven in the full series, seven total. Oh so for um, anyone out there who loves there's more to more to go with after you finish this book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like the Agatha Christie series that had Miss Marple or mm -hmm. Hercule Poirot. It's the mm -hmm. same concept. Yes. Um, and someone says, "Yes, I read them, and they are very good." Yep. And it looks like too some of them um, um, are other ones of those were made were made into uh, were filmed as well. Yes. Um, the first five, yeah. Cool. I think one of the things we learn through this book and learning about Mignon Eberhardt 
what is um, that her national reputation was extremely strong. She was one of uh, the best-selling authors in, during her career. So we might not have heard of her um, and might not be familiar with some of these books, but her reputation was very solid. Mm -hmm. um, one, one last thing that I just remembered um, from your comment from somebody who said they read the books and loved them, Krista. We mm -hmm. have a place where you can leave a book review um, on the One Book, One Nebraska website. It's right under the um, that like submit an evaluation or a survey, but you can leave a book review about the book, and we would love that under get involved. And if you go down to the bottom, all the way to the bottom here. All the way to the bottom. Um, yeah, under um, evaluations and book review. You've got a link oh, right there. there. Yep. Um, book review. Yep. So, Tell us what you think, just like, you know, on Amazon or Goodreads, people, people like to see what other people who have read the book think and, <laughs> their review, and that helps other readers get engaged and pick up the book themselves. So if you loved it, we would love to hear that and be able to maybe we'll post your review in a um, Facebook post or on Instagram or on the website just to let people know somebody else's perspective about the book. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and something else I'm going to mention since we were talking about the movie, and I'll keep jumping back to this is, and I'm going to get this up here quickly. Um, here at the Library Commission, we do have, and thank you for Lisa reminding me of this, um, the movie uh, public performance site license. Um, all public libraries are covered by this. Um, they're for showing movies inside your library building. So, um, and we are good through September this year. So um, it usually gets renewed every year. So uh, definitely make sure that you uh, take this in consideration, look into this before you start showing movies in your library um, for certain um, videos and movies. Um, and oh, we have a question here. Interest oh, I don't know. Um, are there any performers who portray the author? Mm. I don't know. Not that I'm aware of, but off the top of my head. I know there are for some authors that there are I don't know if anyone has I, I doubt anyone's got this particular author in their repertoire. But I don't know if she's ever been included in a Chautauqua kind mm -hmm. of presentation, so I'm not aware either. I think my hope is with this program highlighting her book that you know they'll become popular again and then that will be something somebody wants to do is, mm -hmm. is be a presenter as Mignon Everhart. That would be fun. Absolutely. It's fun to see the artwork. I know Krista earlier you had pulled up, you know, other iterations of the of the front page, and you know, each time a book comes out, the artwork seems to change. Kind of fun to see that progression. I love what they've done with this, and um, the other, at least the first two in the series are of similar artwork. Just kind of fun to look at all of the different ones. And once you read the book, you look at that picture more closely. It's like, oh, and this piece, and this piece, and this piece. So all those little clues and tips um, in the story that show up. Yeah, definitely go back and look at this mm -hmm. while you're reading along and say, aha, that's why that's on the cover. <laughs> yes. And I love that there's a map in this book so you can keep track because it's important in the lodge where people are moving. And it's really nice to be able to Kind of plot where everybody was and where something happened um, to keep that straight. And I know, um, I believe her husband was an architect, so there was speculation that maybe he drew the map for this particular book, which I think is a really great user uh, reader tool. I love books with maps. All right. 
any other a little after 11 but we did start a little after 10 so that's okay um anybody have any other comments or questions or suggestions for anything um, any ideas about what you're you're doing in your library with one book one nebraska this year So definitely follow the Facebook page. Uh, keep an eye on what's going on for the um, program as as we and uh, and the website here as more events and things are added. Any final words from uh, you all, Becky, Christy, Tessa? Thank you for having us, and hope everybody picks up a copy to read. Yeah, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> nominate things for next year yes think about next year's the 20th anniversary what do we want to do special and what would be a special title for that yeah, yeah. that would be a hard one <laughs> well, we're going to have some good conversations about that <laughs> all right i don't see anything any desperate urgent questions coming in that's fine you all know how to reach uh tessa um, about this if you do want to or go to the website for more information um, so I think I'll wrap things up thank you so much um, Becky and Christy and Tessa for being with us today and talking about this book um, very exciting um, new title for this year um, so that will wrap it up for today's show back to our encompass live uh, website here um, as I said we are recording and the archive will be available here these are upcoming shows um, yes it looks a little I'm working on getting things added. I've actually had an email conversation right now with a couple of people to get them. Dates are filling up, so keep your eye on here for as, as new type, new shows get added. But the archive for today's show will be here. The um, most recent ones are at the top of the list. And there will be um, a link to the recording. We posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel and a link to the slides that uh, Tessie used will be here. You have access to both of those. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is available. Uh, probably should be done by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and uh, YouTube cooperate with me. Um, and we'll um, push out on our social media and to our mailing lists. Um, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live as well, where we promote things. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, um, meet the speakers. Uh, things that we do um, and then letting people know when the recordings of previous ones are available so you like to use Facebook you can give us a like over there we also use the hashtag and comp live a little abbreviation for our show on other things like Instagram and Twitter so you can keep an eye on things there as well um, for the archives here I'll also just remind you um, this is the um, we have a search feature here if you're looking for a particular see if we've done a show on some topic you might be interested in um, you can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months uh, that is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because this is a giant page. <laughs> this goes all the way back to uh, the first episode of Encompass Live, which was in January 2009. So we are in our 15th year of Encompass Live. Oh my gosh. Uh, so just do pay attention if you're watching any old shows to the original broadcast date. They all have a date on here. Um, many of the shows will be fine and still be good, useful information, stand the test of time, but some things will become old and outdated. Um, information may be no longer be valid because it's from like a previous year's, you know, grants or program, um, or some programs may no longer exist anymore, uh, have changed drastically, links might not work anymore. People might not work at the same library they were at 10 years ago when they presented on the show. Uh, so just pay attention to that date if you are watching any of our archived shows. So I hope you join us next week when we're talking more about reading. Uh, Read the Rainbow, serving the LGBTQ plus community in your library. Uh, Lynn Gibson, who is from right here in Lincoln, Nebraska at our Lincoln City um, um, Libraries, will be talking about how you can um, all things LGBTQ and how to um, have this in your library. So definitely join us for that next week and any of the other upcoming shows. Like I said, I've got things filling in here. Keep an eye on the schedule. You're going to see some new things added very soon as I get descriptions and confirmations from people. Um, so other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here, joining us, and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Yeah,